Hi there Excel fans and thanks for tuning into this video. I have recently been working on and completed a long series of videos around creating an advanced athlete monitoring tool, primarily designed around team sports, but you could modify it and use it for anyone really. Um, I've had a few people email me and ask, how do I get started? And to be fair, those videos probably aren't if you're right at the beginning of the process. So I'm going to walk you through how I would suggest you get started on some basic load monitoring. And all I have is a file with one sheet called Control Panel, and I have a list of names here. I have selected these names, and I have called it List Names up in the list box. If you don't know how to do that, I can show you how. So I'm going to go to the name manager and just delete that. Let's do it again. I've selected the names and I'm going to type list names in the name box. When I hit enter, it's there. Let's add a sheet. I'm going to call it database. You can call it anything you like. Now in this database sheet, I'm going to have some column headings. And that's it. I've got six column headings. They're a bit tight for my liking, so I'm going to expand out the width of the column, and I'm going to make them bold. And in this first box here, under Athlete, click on Data Validation, choose List, and I'm going to type list of names. If I do that, I get the drop down list showing the names that I had selected on the other sheet. Now, there's another way to do data validation. You can simply select list again, but you could type, for example, rugby and fitness. And so now we've got a drop-down box with just those two things in there. Now that's really good because in both of those cases, misspelling would mean that some of our formulas a bit later on wouldn't work too well. I'm going to make something up here. I'm going to put 100, and I'm going to put 6, so that I can write a little formula in a minute. Let's put a date in here, the 1st of the 1st, 2016. So with this little data set here, we're now ready to get started. I, I can click on Insert, and then Table. It's correctly selected my cells, so I can choose OK. Up here, I'm going to give the table a name. I'm going to call it TBL Data. Now, because I've got a list of names on the other sheet, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm just going to copy that whole list across and paste it in. You can see that the table expanded there for us. So we can fill this in. Now if I pull this down, we'll see that the dates increment. I do not want that. Let's hold the control key down when I drag and it will not increment. It's a good little trick for you. Double click and send 100 down. We could just randomly type some numbers in here until we got to the bottom. Let's do that. I'm just pasting the same numbers in all the way down. So we've got a duration in RP, which means using the standard formula of duration times RP, we can calculate load. Now if I type equals and I click on the duration in the same row, up in the formula bar it's saying at duration. That's the way that Excel references a column. As soon as I hit enter, they all populate. That's one of the beauties of using Excel tables. You write a formula in, and it applies all the way down. The circumstances that it doesn't do that in are when there's already some information in that column, and it doesn't know if you want to overwrite or not. So you can see the little lightning bolt here, and it's asking you questions to say, what do you want us to do here? You can muck around with those yourselves. 
even though I know it's proper practice having it aligned to the right I'm going to put it in the middle because I like it that way it's a little bit easier to see particularly when you've got lots of columns in place I'm going to click Save because that's always a good idea. I've taken the liberty of adding in about 10 sessions worth of data. If I double click on the bottom margin of the selected cell where the cursor is, it takes me to the bottom. So you can see I've gone down to row 161 and I've just put an RPE duration and a training type for all of the team all the way through until the 12th. I haven't done it every day. Uh, it's mostly rugby sessions, but a couple of fitness sessions in there as well. If I am inside the table, I can click Insert and Pivot Table. If I put it on a new worksheet, A blank sheet is created. It's been called Sheet 2 by default. If I pull Date into the filter, so all I'm doing is clicking on the field up at the top of the wizard and dragging it into uh, one of the four quadrants down below. Athlete, let's do the most obvious one first, training load. As soon as I click away from the pivot table, that field list disappears. So it's gone now. At the moment, it's selecting all the dates. I could click on one of them if I wanted to, and the pivot table would only show the load for that one. Inside the pivot table, I could do something like sorting from largest to smallest. Again, why not try that? You could also select multiple items and saying show me the sum of training load for the first week from the first to the seventh and there we go it's got it in there for us again with my cursor inside the table on the analyze tab I can choose insert pivot chart clustered column is the first one that appears and it looks like Excel is wanting us to use that I'm going to follow along with that because I think it's probably the right option. Let's pop it next to the pivot table, expand it a little bit bigger both to the right and down and I can right click on these little buttons here and hide them. That gives us a little bit more real estate. Click on the title put total training load or something like that. Don't think I need that legend on the right here. If I right click and choose add data labels, that can be useful too I think. Some people think that means that you can delete the axis. Like so. But I'd be inclined to leave it in there because I think it's always useful to have something there on the left hand side. At the moment it doesn't have an axis label. We could do that up in the design tab. You could put uh, a U or something like that, which means arbitrary units. We've got a little We've got a chart here, we've got a table that's showing from highest to lowest the training load for the first five days. I could take out those days and add those two, click OK, and it's going to update right in front of my eyes. So already, without really having to work that hard, we've got some basic training load monitoring in place. How about we click inside this pivot table again. Our field list has disappeared because we closed it before but we can get it back. On the analyze tab there's a button that says field list. And so why don't I pull RPE down into the values field. Just pull this across to the right. Now I don't like that it's showing sum of RPE. It really doesn't make a lot of sense. So I can right click 
choose summarize values by and put average in there. Right click again and choose number format. Don't be tempted to click format cells. Number format is what you want. One decimal place is more than enough. The problem is we can't really see it on the chart. So I'm going to right click on the chart and choose change series chart type. And down here where it says average of RPE, I'm going to choose line and secondary axis. So it's put up a secondary axis for us on the chart. I just drag this across to the right for now. So I can format the axis properly. Now we know that RPE is 0 to 10, so I'm going to hard code that in by over typing those auto generated numbers with 0 and 10. And you can see when I did that, the reset button appeared on the right hand side. So if you change your mind and you want to allow it to be an auto axis label, click that reset button and it will go back to what it was before. Like so, you can click it again and it's gone back to nothing. I don't want it to be auto, I always want it to show 0 to 10. I don't think we need a decimal place, so down here choosing 0 is the option I'm going to go for. Pull this chart back across now. I'm going to update the title to say Total Training Load and Average RPE. Add a label for my secondary vertical axis, which should be average RPE is fine. And so I think we're good to go now. We have got a little pivot table. We've got our team sorted from highest to lowest. We can only have it sorted by one of these two things. It can't be sorted by both load and RPE, so I'm just going for load at the moment. And there's one more feature I'm looking to add. And that is, if we click inside the table, we can put a slicer. Because we've only got a few dates in here, we can choose date and it's not going to be too uh, unwieldy. Lift this up so that it is out of the way of the chart. And just bump out this column by something like that. That gives us a little bit of room to expand. And so now that we've got this, I can simply click on a single date by hitting any of these buttons, or more than one date holding the control key down. And the chart's going to update in front of my eyes. So I've got that neat little ability to interact with it. Now let's go back to our database table and go down to the bottom. From the control panel sheet, I'm going to copy those names again, paste them all in. Let's make this the 14th of the 1st. Copy that down. Let's make it a fitness session. Copy that down. 45 minutes long. Copy that down. And I'm just going to select these numbers here to apply some arbitrary data quickly to our table. Click Save. Like I said, always a good idea. Go back to our table. We can see that there's nothing here for the 14th. We can't select it in our slicer, and we can't select it up here. So it must be a bit of a problem. The problem is that it doesn't automatically refresh. So I can refresh in lots of ways. From inside the pivot table, if I've selected it, I can choose Refresh here. Or I can go up to the Analyze tab and click Refresh here. So let's do that. Refresh. And we can see the 14th now appeared. If I select it, there is our RPE times duration for that particular day. 
once again with the control button I can select multiple days. I could also if I wanted to add another slicer for example we, we've got fitness and rugby training loads. There's probably not enough data to really gain value out of that yet but certainly something you could consider. So that was a quick walkthrough of how you could get started with a simple RPE times duration training load monitoring tool. It's certainly not going to have you uh, in a position to take over the world just yet, but it's something you can work with. And you can easily add more data as much as you like. Excel can hold thousands and thousands of rows, so you're not going to run out of space. If you wanted to, you could jazz things up a little bit by having uh, more columns out here to the right with other variables in there. But this is a really good place to start if you haven't got anything at the moment. can make it look a bit more interesting by colouring up this pivot table, colouring up the slicer, colouring up the table. For example, the pivot table has got a bunch of styles you can choose from. On the design tab, you can pick anything you like really. Something like that. The slicer as well has got a, a set of styles you can choose from. For example, something like that. And you could go to the view tab and turn off the grid lines and suddenly you've got something that doesn't look too bad you could put a title in and print this out and give it to the coach if you wanted to if you want a copy of this file please email me if you want to go a bit more deep than this and get a bit more advanced with a training load monitoring tool then please consider clicking on the link below and going to my Vimeo channel and there's a 50% discount if you use these codes as well so happy hunting and I'll see you next video